we're not going to go before, I, have to, I usually have to start with a little bit of an explanation. And it goes a little bit like this. When we perform rakugo, we use only two props. In Japanese, we call this sensu. In English, we call this a fan. In Japanese, we call this a tenugui. In English, we call this a hand towel. When we perform rakugo, we wear special clothing. In Japanese, we call this a kimono. In English, we call this a kimono. <laughs> when we perform rakugo, we sit in this special way. In Japanese, we call this seiza. In English, we call this punishment. <laughs> Usually people have that much of an explanation, then they're ready to go. You know, the Japanese language is also very difficult. You have to be very, very careful when you're speaking Japanese. Because, you know, one little mistake in Japanese can completely change the meaning of what you want to say. And I was, I was performing in Nagoya, the city of Nagoya, and I left Nagoya Station, I got in a taxi, and I got to the theater that I wanted to go to, and I said to the taxi, I wanted to say to the taxi driver, san watashi wo koko de oroshite kudasai. Which means, driver, please let me off here. And I went, one little mistake. I said, Nintei san, watashi wo koko de koroshite kudasai. Which means, driver, please kill me here. <laughs> and then there's an important part of Japanese grammar. It's called nobasu. It's lengthening the vowel. This is almost imperceptible to the anglophone ear. But if you lengthen the vowel, you can really run yourself into trouble. And I'll give you some pairs of words that are troublesome. Tori. Bird. Tori. Road. Okay, now if you mistake a bird for a road or a road for a bird, you're not going to get in that much trouble. These get worse. Oba-san. Madam. Oba-san. Old lady. <laughs> Shujin, husband. Shujin, prisoner. <laughs> Komo, supervisor. Komo, asshole. <laughs> Yoroshiku. I think some of you may have heard this word before. Yoroshiku. It's a very difficult word to translate briefly into English, but Yoroshiku basically means I thank you in advance for your kindness. And this is a word when we meet, for, we meet people for the first time, or when we're starting a day of work, or starting some kind of project together, or what I would say at the beginning of a performance to my audience. Now the trouble is, Yoroshiku on its own is not very polite. It's very, very casual. So I have to make it more polite. Now, I'll just give you a little bit of a Japanese lesson here. If you want to make something more polite in Japanese, you have three options. You raise the status level of the other person. Number two, you lower your own status level. Number three, you raise the status level of the other person at the same time as lowering your own status level. <laughs> So different, different shades of gray, right? Uh, if you say yoroshiku, a little bit more polite, yoroshiku onagaishimasu. Which translates to, I humbly thank you in advance for your kindness. You see, now I'm humble. So I'm being more polite to you. Then the next one will be yoroshiku onagaishimasu. Which means, I humbly thank you in advance for your esteemed kindness. <laughs> You see now, the kindness that you're going to do to me in advance has become esteemed, and I'm humble. So we're broadening the distance between us, and I'm being more polite. Then the next one up will be, Yoroshiku goshido no hodo onegai mo Which means, I hope I am humble enough to accept your esteemed kindness and teaching. <laughs> so now you see, I've raised you all to the little teacher, me down to the little student, thereby widening the gap between us and being more polite to you. I'm not actually expecting to learn anything from you. 
This is just a way to be polite. <laughs> and then there's the most polite form of this phrase, which is Yoroshiku goshido goben tatsu no hodo negawashu zonjite which means please teach me and hit me with a whip. <laughs> So it's those kind of things that start making me lose confidence in my English. You know, and Japanese people say things to me to make me lose confidence in my English, and I don't mean it, but I'm starting to really lose confidence in my English after all these years. I get invited to do Rakugo this way in English in Japan sometimes as well. And about a year and a half ago, I went to Hokkaido, the northernmost island of Japan, and I performed a little bit of English Rakugo in front of 300 Japanese students. And the story I did on that day goes something like this. Once upon a time, there was a little boy with a very long name. His name was Jugemu Jugemu Goko Ono Surikiri Kai Jari Sui Yoro Sungematsu Ungematsu Kurai Matsu Kuneru Tokoro Ni Sumu Tokoro Yabura Koji Bura Koji Paipo 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 no Shuringan Shuringan no Gurindai Gurindai no Pompokopi no Pompona no Chokyu Mei no Chosuke. One day his neighbor, Kin Chan, came to pick him up for school. And Kin Chan said, <laughs> Time to go to school. <laughs> And Jugemu's mother came in and said, Arama Kinchan, you are so nice. But our Jugemu, Jugemu, go for the beginning, guys, everything, nothing, 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 Wait here, wait here, I'll wake him up. Hey, hey, Jugemu, Jugemu, go for the beginning, guys, everything, nothing, 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 Wake up! <laughs> King Chan is here to pick you up. I'm sorry, King Chan. I'm sorry, King Chan. Two game, two game, go on, sit here, guys. Let's see you. King Kong, 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 King Kong, 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 ma'am. His name was so long. School for today is already finished. <laughs> So then I read the survey, or anketto in Japanese, of the students who had come to see the show, and I got these kinds of comments. Sunshine san speaks very good English. I was surprised. <laughs> Sunshine san's English sounds almost like a native speaker. Of course. <laughs> 